Hey, good morning. It's a little later in the morning right now, about uh, 7.30, half the day's almost gone. What have you guys been doing? All right. Now, I got my uh, uh, goopy uh, cutting compound at just the right consistency. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, see that? Just about right. I wouldn't try it on crackers. Okay, now I, I even got out some touch-up paint here and uh, touched up all the little things that I did moving this thing in here, all the little dings and stuff. I think that machine's just looking real good. And oh, whoa, oh, what do we got going back here? Well, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and I'm going to show you what's going on right here. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see how that looks there. I think you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Now this is a jig board machine and uh, I uh, got this method from a salesman at Moore. And uh, I was uh, I had to do a lot of stuff to this machine to replace the spindle bearings. And uh, <clears throat> I had a lot of help. I, I couldn't afford to have them do it, but uh, um, they told me how to do it. Okay. So when you uh, trim in your bridge port, uh, there's all kinds of different ways to do it, okay? But this is a jig bore, and we're going to do it a different way. So what we do is we take uh, deburr this. I deburred it with the really great stones that were sent to me. And uh, I use things that are sent to me, and I appreciate them. I, I don't want stuff I can't use, though. <laughs> I got too much stuff I can't use. OK, so, so here's a, a tenth reading dial indicator. Each one of those uh, little marks is 10,000 seven inch or 100 millions. And what I have here is uh, just an old kick around gauge block, a square gauge block. I, what is that thing? Pratt & Whitney, uh, 142 thousandths. So any gauge block will do. It, uh, it's probably best not to use an, uh, a new gauge block. You know, because it's going to take some beating here. So instead of having the indicator run on a surface and you rotate this thing around and, and dial it in, we're going to use that gauge block. And this is how you use it. You bring the gauge block from behind. And you start ringing it into the table. And see where it ends up. You come from behind, then you push it back, then you bring it back. And you want it to get to a stable position that's going to keep reading less. is stabilizing out at uh, just about four ten thousandths to zero. Yeah, we'll call that good, okay? Now, this is going to be hard, but we'll try it. Not much room in here. I'm going to move you over here, and hopefully I still have room. Now I move this jig bore around and uh, got it over here in the corner and I've only got it leveled with the stair at number 98 level. I have not put the, uh, the master precision level on it yet. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over. I don't know if you can read it. I sure hope you can. Let's see. Let's try to get you over there. Now we were four ten, ten thousandths before zero on this indicator. I, it's really tough to tell. 
If you can't see it, you're going to have to believe me. So I'm going to start bringing this gauge block from behind, and I'm going to start ringing it into that table. Okay, we're going to stabilize it out by keep doing it. It looks like it's about three ten thousandths out of tram. Maybe four. Ah. Three and a half ten thousandths out of tram. And that's pretty good. Now the standard will be uh, 80 millionths on this machine is, is the standard that they set up for a new machine. So we're about uh, a little over 300 millionths. Now what's sitting on here is uh, a Gordon 15 inch light duty rotary tail. And I have this on there because uh, the stuff I put on put on here, see this thing takes a beating. It took a beating before I got it. It looks like somebody parked it with an end mill. But this is really quite an accurate table, even though uh, as old as this is. And it's within one ten thousandths. So we can narrow this down to the, the tram being out somewhere around two ten thousandths. And, uh, and it's a little bit out of level. Okay, so we're looking good on track. Really not bad. I, I, I'm really quite happy with that. I thought you might want to uh, see how the factory recommends checking tram on a, on a more jig board. You use the gauge block just like that. And you ring it in. See? Okay, I did bring coffee out here, and I better have a drink. Seems like there's smoke in the air, probably from fires or something. It makes me hoarse. Okay, I'll take this camera loose. Now, here, I've got a, a really pretty cool reproduction of a 1950s tool room, uh, milling type machines, with this um, really cool uh, brown and sharp uh, mill with the uh, sliding um, vertical head. It's driven by a spline here, and put an adapter that's in there, and also run uh, horizontal arbors and leave this attached. Uh, very unique machine that uh, was made very short time during the war. Then it was replaced with the sliding head mill Model 20 Range Master, which is an extremely hard to find machine and really pretty cool. Okay, so uh, the uh, Bridgeport came along and uh, they had. Uh, uh, advertise you know it's a jig board it's a milling machine it does everything and the, the old guy that uh, i paid to show me how to use the more jig board machine called yeah oh, the bridge board the machine that does everything but nothing very well at all <laughs> i kind of think that's kind of funny but he's an old time guy and the bridge is an extremely useful machine and it basically did uh replace the, uh, these two machines here so these two machines here actually do everything better than a bridge port but they weigh almost 10,000 pounds, and it'll take you a considerable amount of time to uh, set up and do those things better than a bridge port will do. So the bridge port's not going away, it probably never will, but it uh, really took industry by storm and uh, changed things, you know. 
So I thought you might find that kind of interesting. Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, I moved these machines and uh, the, the, uh, this machine here is extremely heavy. It's called a heavy mill. A number two that weighs 5,000 pounds. It's, it's just incredible. It's got that really wide base. It's got extra uh, long overarms. Well, I had it over here and uh, on a soft spot on the floor and it was sinking, sinking, sinking. I was sticking chunks of metal on there. I got a little, a little drill press on that uh, soft spot. And uh, the corners here are, are good and stable. And I'm, so I'm leveling out the machines now. Uh, this jig bore is going to take a while, you know, for things to settle in and stuff. But you just can't kind of keep stabbing at it. But the way it is, three ten thousandths, three uh, out of tram, the way it's hit, it's still, it's still usable and it won't hurt to, to use it. Now when I really get this thing dialed in, it's got to be 68 degrees in here and uh, then I'll get the thing dialed in. I'm kind of curious how close I can get it to factory spec. Yeah, uh, pretty close. So, that's what I'm up to. And uh, so uh, you guys get off them stinking forums, get in your shop and make something, okay? Bye-bye.